Hello everyone, and welcome. Um, you know, there's uh, some things kind of looking odd behind me, and that's because um, we are in the process of moving. Uh, like, you know, the big bookshelf you might notice over there and such, and tons of boxes you can kind of see some... Eh, thing with voice camera. Um, as I said, I've been packing stuff, but I uh, kind of slowed down on that because there was a bit of a uh, woof spot, but things are looking up again now. The studio I was originally looking at uh, went back to being worked on and finished. So I'm hoping to actually be moving into that tomorrow on Monday, uh, which is probably when this video is going to go up. Um, I will, for a little while, not have the internet. I will hopefully have the internet as soon as possible, but I'm assuming it won't be any any later than the end of this week. Um, you know, what's next weekend. Um, but I'm hoping to get it as soon as possible. Um, but... Anyway, uh, we're going on the 360. Um, we're packing some more, so I figured why not go through the remaining stuff I haven't done yet while I'm packing it. So, let's uh, go on with 360 with Overlord 2. Um, I have not personally played it or started it yet. Uh, I watched my friend play a little bit. It looked interesting. Uh, we'll, we should get to that sometime. Fable 3, um, I was playing Fable 3, and then very, very, very quickly in the game, I ran some stupid bug where, like, I'm in the underground area and I have to cross a bridge, and for some reason the game won't register it, the event that's supposed to happen. But this was back when it first came out, I got it as a gift. Oh, pardon me. All the dust in the air from moving everything, whew. By the way, my allergies. But anyway, uh, I had to restart that unless uh, there's a patch out that fixes it, which might be the case, but I'm so close to the beginning, I'd probably be better off restarting it and actually start recording it. Uh, Mass Effect. Um, I can't say Mass Effect really interests me much, and that's not because it's a bad game. It's not because it's bad. It's just general aesthetics. I'm not really into sci-fi much. It's very hard to get me in the sci-fi, and it didn't really hook me. But then again, uh, Star Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic one didn't hook me. It took a long time to hook me, like trying it, giving up, trying it, giving up, and doing that so many times as I only progressed a little by each time I kept trying it again to try and get into it until I finally became a Jedi. And, Awesome Jedi powers going to kick us. So you know they it could be like, oh, dang allergies. But uh, I could I could change I could change uh, one day that. But uh, right now I don't really feel like trying to get not not to piss anyone off. It's uh, Quark was awake. Uh, uh, assault on Dark Athena. Which is supposed to be a expansion add-on with a complete remake of uh, what was it, Butcher Bay? I believe I haven't. I played a lot of the original Xbox One. Um, I have not played uh, the Assault. Um, I got this really cheap Pirates of Caribbean at World's End. Um, I got it because it was co-op. Uh, sadly, I found out it's very horrible. So, yeah, surprise movie game horrible. Shocking. Shadow One, uh, very early. Actually, I think it was a launch 360 title, wasn't it? Um, has nothing to do with the uh, Shadow One gun. It's, it's a weird first person shooter. Um, a little interesting, but. Uh, um, uh, important note uh, multiplayer only. If you're getting this for a single player experience, it's garbage. There's no split screen at all. Um, there is a li uh, system link, actually, but there is no split screen or anything. This is garbage for offline, unless you got multiple systems. Because <laughs> all you can play is with bots. Uh, Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter, um, not really my kind of thing, to be honest. 
I keep finding time. Uh, Spoiler Cells are the only Tom Clancy games I'm really get into. Uh, Star Trek Legacy. I uh, played a good chunk of this. Uh, I forgot... I forgot which Joe Way show was in. Um, the story takes place during all the different um, series, so... Um, it's a, uh, it's kind of interesting. It's not bad. I, I played a lot worse. Um, Halo Wars, uh, the collector's edition, and uh, ten. Uh, a friend of mine was uh, getting rid of uh, some stuff for uh, money, and um, he asked me if I wanted this, and uh, he gave it to me really cheap. So um, I was like. I mean, I'm not a big Halo fan, but, uh, I have not played that. Uh, Flame of mine has played a little bit, but I haven't. Open, I got this stuff, uh, like, you know, uh, box, like, five bucks, I get a whole bunch of crap of that, uh, open season movie game, you know. Um, I gave this its own case, but, uh, <laughs> oh, I, I really apologize for all the sniffling. Uh, it is really all the dust. Um, but uh, Quake 4 is a bonus disc, which is Quake 2. So this is Quake 2. Um, if you get Quake 4, um, you probably want to make sure this disc is with it if you care about playing Quake 2. Uh, Kadim Bloodshot 2. Um, I haven't finished it. I beat the first Kadim, but I haven't fit like, I got so far and I just stopped playing it. Uh, Blue Dragon. A game I was really hyped for, but to be honest, there was something about I couldn't really get into. Which was kind of weird, because I really get into Japanese RPGs a lot easier. Um, I don't know. I mean... Eh, maybe it was just something, because, um, I also do get bored out on, um, certain types of RPGs, so sometimes there's also bad timing. I remember, like, um, what was it? There was a game on the PS1. I didn't like it at first, but it was because I was trying to have a kind of a bored out part, and then I played it again, and I really liked it. Uh, if we discovery. Um, I only played a little of it. Um, seemed alright. Uh, it's kind of a hard graphic front there. No, wait, actually. No, it's just going off here. No, dust is affecting my brain. <laughs> uh, Samurai Warrior 2, which I got for uh, co op. Um,. 360 exclusive features. Oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's Dicey War stuff. Tax Slash, you know. It's always a. Uh, oh, good lord, here's a horrible one. Bomber Man. Bomber Man Zero. Now, this is an awful game. Good job, Konami, for destroying this. I mean. Taking it into a mature direction isn't the worst thing you could have done. That ain't necessarily why I think it's horrible, but um, it is something I dislike. But um, what I th really think destroys this game is the fact that there's no like save continue system or anything in it, or passwords or anything to continue from any s certain stage. You die, you start from stage one, which, um, what was it, there was a hundred levels to beat this game, and you have to do it in one sitting, and never freaking die. <laughs> and the ending is horrible, I've seen the ending on YouTube, it's, you, you want to see the ending, just YouTube it, it's not worth it at all, period. Uh, Call of, uh, uh, I fall in a few different ways of pronouncing this. Uh, oh, I'm not sure. I'm not gonna even try it. Um, it's a, a Western first person shooter. I only played a wee teeny little bit of it. Um, it seemed to take a realistic tone, which ain't necessarily bad. Uh, 
Pocket Bike Racer, uh, the Ball King games. I do have the three Ball King games. Um, uh, this is definitely the second best out of the three. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get to the uh, two of you. Uh, Wedge Racer 6, it was, uh, I got real cheap. Um, I got it from my father, really, to be honest, to uh, play. He likes the Wind Raider. Conflict uh, Denied Ops. I got this to play co-op, and uh, when I played, did not impress me at all. But of course, I'm a very picky person to impress when it comes to first person shooters. Uh, Gears of War 2. I was looking forward to playing Gears of War 2 a lot, but for some reason, I played only a bit of it, and it bored me really fast. And I guess it was because I didn't really realize, but after Gears of War 1, you know, everyone was really, like, trying to copy of it, obviously. And, you know, I kind of didn't really realize I was kind of burnt out on that. Um, but, you know, it's been a long time since I played uh, any of the games like Gears of War, so, you know, maybe something to get to. Uh, no, uh... Cars. Oof. Sneak King. Uh, probably the best, uh, in my opinion, the best of the three uh, Ball King games for the freaking humor of you stalking people and feeding them breakfast. Here's your egg muffin, bitch. But nothing's weirder than coming out of the trash cans like here. Wapple. Oh, thank you, King. I uh, never finished it, though. Um, it started actually getting hard on the other end. Um, Rock Band 2. Um, only played a bit of it. I uh, was getting bored hell on the music games. Uh, Dark Void. Um, I got on a, a deal. Uh, um, I haven't started it yet. Um... I'm looking forward to it. I mean, something Yahtzee actually liked. <gasps> um, Two Worlds. It was very disappointing. It was promising a... Promising a really fun witch experience. Uh, kind of like Diablo. And a forced person-like perspective. Forced third person perspective. And... Just, oh my goodness. Um, I am referring to its launch, though. Um, I have not touched it yet. After that, um, whether they fixed it, improved and such, um, I don't really truthfully know. And to be honest, I probably don't really care too much because, to be honest, it just they'd have to fix a lot. Of stuff. Now, here's an interesting game that does have a lot of hate, and it did so well, but it is a bit interesting. Um, Operation Darkness, uh, published by Atlas for America, it is a tactics. Um, 3D game, uh, 3D wise, it looks horrible. Um, but it takes place during World War Two, and basically, uh, you get into a squad of, like, werewolves and shit, who are trying to kill, uh, Hitler, um, cause basically, uh, he's, uh, doing necromancing and shit, and bringing the dead and stuff into his war. Um, I did not get far into this game. It's not cause I disliked it. Um, this game is really freaking hard, like, there's no forgiveness in this game. Um, you ever hear me talk about tactics games? I'll tell you, I love Final Fantasy Tactics. It's one of my favorite tactics games, but it certainly was one of the easiest ones that I've ever played. And I will always say that, pretty much. I, I don't think I've ever played an easier tactics game than Final Fantasy Tactics. This, this has to be one of the hardest tactics games I have played because it's really like you really have to take a lot of stuff into consideration and it's really evil. It is out to kill you. <sighs> Put all that stuff in now. Actually you no, know, I should be putting these in the other box and oh dear. Yeah, I want to put these in this box. Pardon me for one second folks. Quick swap of boxes, because I do have to keep uh, these in a certain order if I want to put them on my shelves and stuff back in their proper order. Oh, uh, Saints Row. 
everyone's favorite GTA whip-off. Um, probably the most successful GTA whip-off. Um, start out pretty much at the same level as, like, Grand Theft Auto 3. Um, a little dwell more into the, uh, insanity, but everyone knows, uh, up to 3, it just got, keep get, kept getting more crazy on 3 slowly has gone insane. <laughs> uh, it's not really a bad game, though. Um, if you're looking for GTA... Because it also is slightly different from GTA in some ways. So. Pardon me, I really got... Very sorry. Very sorry. Ugh. I apologize. Deeply apologize about that. Um, just the allergies are really, really bad. <sighs> okay, continue on. Uh, the Forest Temple. Um, I believe this was in one of my update videos. Um, you know, something I noticed. Um, okay, somebody commented. Um, apparently this was more expensive. I don't know about right now. Um, but at the time, apparently this was going for $39. Not on only Walmart site, but Amazon and stuff. But I even double checked going into my Walmart store and it was $29. I have no idea why it was selling for 39 Now at this moment, it's probably cheap or it's been like, what, a half year since came out. Uh, this ain't a horrible game. Uh, it's co-op, split screen stuff. Um, it's not really a great game, but I mean, it's... You're getting a hack at such. Um, if that's not interest enough to you, then just skip it. Cheap hack at such. Uh, I had not... I had didn't play tons of it, but from what I played, nothing really strange or off... Like, broken than that. But anyway, uh, Last Remnant. Very, very hard graphic. Uh, yes, very hard graphic. Um, the Last Remnant was originally going to be on the PS3, but it only came out on the PC and 360. Um, and this was supposed to be due to programming problems and lack of care because of sales. Um, Last Remnant, I believe... Didn't they use the Unreal Engine? A number they used. Yes, uh, they did indeed use the Unreal Engine uh, for this. This, uh, I think, is the first and only time Square Soft or Square Enix ever used the Unreal Engine. And um, this is a kind of an interesting idea because it kind of reminds me of elements from the Saga series. Um, I did not play a lot of it, and I'm not really following it, like, barely anywhere in it, so, uh, I think I might just start that out for and make it, so, let's play if I get to it. Uh, something I do want to definitely get to soon is the, uh, <clears throat> I'm sure I'm going to pounce the beginning of it, the Augie, Aug you know, I like the European name more, Generation Wars, very simple. Record of the Aug... Argoist War. See what? What we'll just call Generation Wars. Generation War Zero. It's a prequel to the previous game, which, um. Actually, I might as well show that off too next year. Um, I got the limited edition version, and, uh. I always put its special boxes away. I, all my, like, limited edition boxes and stuff, I put in a special box to, uh, take care of them. Um, but, uh. Um, I already did a video showing the, uh, limited edition stuff with it, so, but I'm sorry I can't show them, uh, here real quick. Um, but I do, because, um, okay, how should I say this, um, kind of varying, um, when I beat a game, I usually put it back in its limited edition box or its special box and put it on the sh shelf where I put my beating games. And usually when it's not being, I put the boxes in that in a special area until I beat them, unless the box is really awkward or I just haven't gotten around to doing that. But, uh, I have been the first game and, oh, uh, a fair warning, uh, this is a very perverted perverted looking box. 
they certainly did this to be intentional. I mean, like, <laughs> like seriously, this gives this must have made so many people nervous picking this game up. Like, oh my goodness, um, completely wrong idea of the game. Like, you would think this is some kind of dating sim game, not a military tactics game. Um, Luckily, they didn't do this to the actual game cover. Um, and in case, I look the word take the special items out because they're not really packed well, and I don't want to spend 500 ages trying to get them back in the box properly. But see, that's the original. That. Um, in case you're curious, what you do get uh, in this special? Uh, let's see. Uh, the image on the back is really small, but. Um, you get a mouse, a boob mouse pad. In case you don't know what a boob mouse pad is, it's a, um, it's a mouse pad. You ever see those mouse pads that have like fluffy gel on them to make you wish? Um, Japan has this thing with those, except with, just just Google it. Just Google. I'm sure you can find. <laughs> and you get a a uh, a pillowcase. Um, that's. That's probably one of the most bizarre limited editions I ever seen, and uh, I think marketing wise it actually worked for um d j hero um I don't remember if I put this in that video when I got this um I don't remember um I got d j hero uh, a a d j hero uh, pad thing will really really cheap on sale for like 10 bucks with the game. Oh, here's a good one. Deadly Permission. I really liked it, this game. And I really should get back to it. It's very... It's like a Dreamcast game. But it's very interesting. Um, as anyone should know, I don't really usually care about graphics, so... Um, Battle Fantasia. I only played a Wii teeny bit of this and um I never picking one to kill those and I just got my ass handed to me so I never really got back to it. Uh the uh Sonic's Ultimate Genesis collection, which is a pretty hefty nice number of games, I believe uh, I did a thing of this I believe. Um but uh, you should be able to get to... If you're watching this, you have the internet, so you should be able to get a list of what's on here if you want to see. Um, it has a pretty nice uh, selection of action, some RPGs, fantasy style games now on it, and a few Master System stuff, so... Very nice. The Orange Box, a half-half thing. Beam Portal, uh, did everything in Team Fortress 2. Um, I had never finished Half-Life 2 or Episode 1 or Episode 2. Um, I got, like, on the original Xbox, I got to, like, in Half-Life 2 to the part where there's, like, a giant satellite shooting down at Golden Freeman while he's going in these containers and shit into this building. And that's why I left off the Xbox version. Then they announced this, so I stopped and I was planning to just replay it. But, um, I got to, like, the Ant Lions, I believe, in the 360 version. So, something I do need to get back to so I can actually play Episode 1 and 2. Um, Portal. What's it say about Portal? Awesome game. Buy it. <laughs> I mean, really, buy it. Go buy any fucking version of the orange box or just portal. Buy portal. Um, Guilty Gear 2 Overtorn, which is like a Dynasty Warriors uh, style game, which is a bit odd. Um, Axis uh, published this. Um, I haven't played that one yet. Um, Alone in the Dark 5. Shut up, I know there's no 5 on it, but I'm not just going to call it Alone in the Dark. It... <laughs> what is up with these titled games lately? In movies, too. Where you're just taking the original title and just dropping everything. Like... It's stupid. It's annoying. Especially when this is actually supposed to be 
in the storyline effect of all the other ones except for the Dreamcast one, uh, A New Nightmare, since A New Nightmare technically takes place in an alternate universe, and it is in the same universe as the old games, but this is supposed to be with the old DOS games, so it's like, why the fuck did you call it Alone in the Dark when it's... <sighs> Oh, to you. Um, I did not hate this game. This game got a lot of bad hate when it came out. Um, only thing I generally think is stupid is, like, um, I remember somebody said, like, it's kind of sad that on the back it's like, never get stuck DVD style chapter select one to reach any part of the game's climax. Which is actually a lie, since you actually do have to play. Um, everything to achieve the real ending, so actually that's kind of false. But that would be unexpected, to be honest, in my opinion. I, I did not completely hate this game. There were a few problems, but I think it was actually a nice take on uh, trying to do a more modern take of survival horror, as opposed to just taking scary jump scares into Thor and Paulson and action games. I think it actually did a much better job in trying to keep Spiral Hall alive, evolving, as opposed to simply just becoming a oval shooter, third person shooter, like what the evil did there. But that's in my opinion. Um, I have uh, Final Fantasy XI. Um, it has the uh, Why is the Zero Changer from Mephius and Treasures of the Pi Pronouncing the Town White. I'm not even going to pronounce it. Just treasures in the western place. The foreign kingdom place. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, I have been every expansion in Final Fantasy. The original Final Fantasy XI. Um, I have been all the expansions, which uh, there's also Wing Goss, the three mini expansions, and the um, Abyssia expansions. I've been it all. And I've been waiting for new content, but I'm kind of worried they're not going to go there. Which will be kind of sad, to be honest. Because there's nothing worse than spending a lot of time making a character, and then that one day, well, it's like, why am I still paying money for this? And it's like, pulling the plug is kind of sad, really. I do hope they continue, to be honest. Um, Lost Odyssey. Lost Odyssey, very, very awesome game. Uh, something I definitely need to get back to. Um, I hated how they packaged them. I heard Europe got multiple of these. Uh, we didn't get shit. <laughs> I mean, they put ours in a bunch of sleeves. Or stacky. I can't remember. Um... My uh, Blue Dragon in this, um, I got these um, extra ones here and uh, put the other CDs in the side thing, so. <laughs> kind of a, Just what I did with that. Uh, you want your walk band? Um, I got to like the very end um, of the actual band experience, but I can't do one song on the drum, because I'm the drummer, and, um, what is that damn song, um, I can't remember what it was called, um, it's just so tiring to do that one freaking song. Okay, so, next steps, Virtual Fighter 5 Online, a uh, pretty good one now. Uh, Viking, the Battle of uh, Asgard. Um, a pretty basic hack and slash game with a little stealth uh, missions. Um, it's it's interesting. It's probably really cheap uh, these days. It's definitely also easy uh, um, game or score, but uh, the PS3 version has no trophy support. This was uh, came out when it had no trophy support, so. Um, if you just want for points, um, it's not going to be useful on the PS3 for that. Um, it's an okay action game, to be honest, though. Um, I enjoyed it. But it's nothing 
really special out, uh, outfit. Uh, the outfit. Um, was kind of an interesting game. Um, I ca- uh, I got it for co-op. Uh, I liked the, the interesting idea to like summon uh, guns and shit randomly and just start destroying shit. Um, that was been interesting. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's not the first game to do that. I'm pretty sure I've seen another one do it before. Uh, the Battle for Middle Earth 2. Whatever the hell happened to Battle of the Middle Earth 1, uh, I don't know. I guess they just didn't really want to bother to make a console version for one. But, um... And, uh, I do not own one. Uh, Battle of Middle Earth uh, 2... Um, I played through the entire campaigns and stuff, and it's, it's alright, so... Nothing really complex. They made the controls really easy with the kind of... You can either try and select a few, or... Well, I don't really know. I'm pretty sure it had a select everything on screen thing, which some... Companies did to quickly get... Oh, oh dear. Uh, Tenchu Z. Um, I really actually enjoyed this game, and a lot of people would say it's probably the worst in this series. So maybe not the worst, but definitely not, like... It was really great. I really liked it actually. Uh, playing with other people online on this. Um, not really sure if a lot of people even play it anymore online, but uh, I I really did enjoy playing online with it. Um, I would say it's probably one of the easiest Tenchu games too. Uh, probably a good Tenchu game to start with. Um, <laughs> pardon me. Ooh. Um. I did really enjoy it. Uh, you get quite your own ninja and stuff. And uh, storyline wise, I, the whole Tenchu series, I think, kind of went out the window when you got thrown to the future and shit. If you got that special mission, and it's like. I, I don't even remember, like, everything that was happening. <laughs> uh, Lego Star Wars 2, uh, the original trilogy. Um, this is the first and always Lego. Lego game thing I got from the there was a, I have a few old PC Lego games but I mean um now that you know more modern um be honest I didn't really enjoy it 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 didn't uh didn't uh really well on me wait uh Spreadle House 4 or I don't know what you call it. It's <laughs> Splatter House Reboot. <laughs> oh, good lord. Give it a subtitle for freaking hell. Or how are we supposed to identify this? Especially when it actually comes with the original Splatter House. You get Splatter House 1, 2, and 3 in this as unlockables. Um. Anyone who really, uh, knows, um, Splatter House got a pretty evil whip when it came out with reviewers. And, uh, to be honest, I would suggest, if you want a really more fair opinion of this game, I would suggest looking at the Happy Video Game Nords, um, review respective of it. Um, I think that was a lot more fair Um, be honest, I also think he was also letting, uh, his love for Splathouse uh, forgive some things, too. But to be fair, I think he also was fair, because to be honest, there are points I would agree with him that, uh, a lot of reviewers seem to oddly... Because the game does get really fucking hard near much, much later. It's not a bun match or anything, uh, Um, interesting. Uh, personally, a little... A little too bloody, in my opinion. Just a tad bit, but, um... That's just me. I enjoyed it, and, uh... Like, uh, it has Spoil has 1, 2, and 3, and the 1 is the arcade version, not the Torval Graphic one. So, um... Even if you have the Torval Graphic one, like I do, um, it's a unique, uh, one to play. Um, I would say, especially now, like, uh, I saw it in the bargain bins at Walmart for 19 bucks, so, um, you're getting the three original, and especially since, uh, Splathouse 1 2, I think the cheapest you can get those online is, like, $20, I think? So, I mean, you're automatically getting a good deal, really. Though, you do have to 
actually play the game, the actual game to unlock them, but, um, it's not really that hard in my opinion, so, plus, um, I can't remember if, later on there was like some code thing released out, but I'm not sure if it was 360 or the PS3 versions that had it. Mine did not come with a code. Um, I don't know if they were little packages of that. Um, as far as mine, you know, we'll look at the book maybe. As far as I was aware, mine didn't come with any kind of code thing to like uh, I can take a quick peek additional menu uh, yeah um, doesn't mention yeah it doesn't mention anything about uh, them so uh, I don't know I am Pretty sure I remember somebody saying something that was codes with them, but uh, I, th I think it's a nice pickup. So, uh, Wumble Roses XX or Wumble Roses 2, I, I don't know what the hell it goes by. Um, it's, <laughs> it's a piece of crap. Um, if you're not in it for boobs, then it's a piece of crap. It's not a good game. It's not. It's not a good game. Oh, it's an awful game. Um, Quake Four. Um, Quake Four is better than Doom Three. That's for sure. Um, and yeah, no, that can be debatable. That's just my opinion. Doom Three ain't horrible. But it's just I. At least I could freaking look at, it, not have to pull out a flashlight. Um, quick for, uh, I wouldn't say there's anything really memorable in my opinion for quick for, uh, Fantasy Star, Fantasy Star Universe, um, just referring to the offline, have not played the multiplayer mode, um, even though I think it still exists in the PC v version, it, uh, the servers went down, which is kind of odd, actually, because it usually does what survive all in the console version, so... That's a bit interesting, actually, though. Um, but the, this is only, this was an interesting experiment in trying to create a single-player experience while having a multiplayer uh, MMO mode as well. Um, that way you could experience a story if you didn't have online or want to pay money for online stuff and that. Um, it's it's pretty much a hack and slash for single player. I mean, it's not really hard. Um, I never really had to grind. Uh, weapons kept progressively getting better and that, so I never really had to do a lot of customization or anything. Um, the kills was pretty generic, but... Uh, Oh, oh, pardon me. Kill those are pretty generic, but they kind of have a B-movie thing to them, so I kind of okay with them. <laughs> um, here's a mixed feeling one. Perfect Dark Zero. Um, uh, I don't really completely hate it, but I can actually see why a lot of people don't like it either. Um, I only liked the original Perfect Dark to play with a friend against a whole bunch of bots and other friends and stuff. Um... I never really played the original Perfect Dark story or anything, so I never was <laughs> never was involved with the story during that time. Why my friend, who was the one who owned it, um, obviously was, so he was really disappointed. Oh, I apologize. Oh. Damn allergies. But, um, um, story, to why I actually asked my friend several questions about the game as I progressed to it, and basically it seems to just make tons of references and care, that, like, the screen person, I always seen bits of the story from it. I do have the N64 cartridge, um, I did try playing it some, uh, I'm not really into old first-person shooters. I'm barely into new ones. So it's... 
maybe something we're doing with no time. Uh, Overlord. Um, I have a PS3 version of Overlord 2, and we'll get to that, so I'm not going to really waste time talking about that, but just to mention. Um, I did not get the add-on, uh, and that's basically why I have the other one. It was a gift. Uh, but, um, I've been this, and uh, I really enjoyed it, because I really liked the Pikmin, so this was a kind of a freaky idea. Evil Pikmin. Ooh. Um, very delightful game. Uh, well, <laughs> not delightful, but evilish funny. Uh, one of my first 360 games, uh, 99 Nights. A game that was really panned out. Um, I really liked the character designs for most of the kills. Um, I liked the goblin, the priest, um... The little witch girl was kind of interesting, too. Um, I liked it a lot of music from 99 Nights, too. Um, I haven't played the sequel. I hope they changed a lot of stuff in that. Um, but uh, 99 Nights was an interesting game. But it's essentially Dynasty Warriors, really. So it's not really anything too unique. Uh, here's an interesting game. Um, if you liked or played... Um, um, zombies ate my neighbors, and you never heard of this game. Immediately go get it. Monster Madness Battle for Cerberia is a spiritual successor of freaking Zombies Ate My Neighbors. I mean, it's four player, split screenable, online, well, no, um, only the PS3 version. You can play the story online, I believe. Um, I believe there's only just the multiplayer stuff uh, in survival mode online for the 360 version, which was really a pity, since it was kind of hard to get four people in my... Um, but uh, I played it... Uh, the most I played was with three, and mostly with... Uh, Mostly three, but uh, with two, I played the full thing with two people, and um, it offers a lot of uh, modes in it. Uh, if also, well, no one ever beat Madness mode, which is the hardest mode, because there was some weird glitch at the end. Well, actually, it's debatable. Some people think it was actually on purpose, literally, to be to the, the hardness Madness. Um... Uh, it's a really good game, though. Uh, really freaking hard if you play the hard modes by yourself. Um, but very fun game. Uh, it's really hard to suggest we play it, though. Um, it's pretty long, to be honest, with a lot of... It's very repetitive, so... It's really hard to play it again, but, um, it's a, it's a funny... Makes a lot of different stereotype humor. So, um, if you like Zombie 8, my name will... I'd look it up. It's good spiritual sequel. Lost Planet. I uh, haven't played the sequel. Being the first one, though. Um, Lost Planet was a in- interesting... Interesting... But I can't say I fully enjoyed it. The end was also very weird. Very, very weird ending. Last battle and all in that. Um... Left 4 Dead 2 and Left 4 Dead 1. Uh, um, needless to say, I actually like Left 4 Dead. Uh, my only real problem is the amount of content. Content, content. Especially the, the lie with the first one. I don't care what you say. They lied. They said there would be tons of free content. There wasn't a. There was no free content. It all cost the money on the 360. And whether that was Microsoft's fault, which I truly do blame Microsoft, uh, I'm sure they had a big hand in forcing them to, but still, you shouldn't make promises like that unless you're sure of. And if that was the case, I would have just did what you did with Paul 2, ditch 360, and make them feel really thwin by going to the PS3, which is what you did. And then they made, uh, to my understanding, Portal 2's content was free on 360 because basically they wanted to um, be undermined by the PS3. So, uh, 
I guess that taught Microsoft to not be a greedy asshole, but, um, yeah, I was really disappointed, uh, every new map paid for, and to be honest, I didn't like any of the new maps for either of the two games, um, <sighs> big shame, um, but I do hope the series continues, though, I do enjoy them, but a lot of the download content I didn't enjoy, <coughs> I did not really like a lot of the, the uh, add-on maps, and it didn't help that, I, like, you know, I can't complain when they were free. I may like, dislike them still, but the free, I can't really bitch about much. But I had to pay money for these when they were possibly free, and, uh, well, you know, that's a whole old thing, so, you know, we're in the present here, so not the past, so we still got two more stacks to go through. Halo 3 OSTD. Another example of bad marketing. Was advertised to be a free add-on for Halo 3. And then they decided to sell it as a $60 game. And it only took if two, if I remember correctly, two hours for me to beat this with my friend. Just two hours. And I was just like, a sixty dollar to, a, it's like, oh good lord! I mean, even shit like Modern Warfare, and that now um, that wasn't to be in a bad way. I do actually like Modern Warfare one. Uh, I really liked the, the nuclear explosion part, but they, uh, yeah, that's that topic. But anyway, um, a basic force plus usually is five hours at least. But I mean, at uh, like, at least, but two hours. Two? All you stupid maps did not make you worth the world to me. You. You were why I didn't even touch the other Halo games eat. It was me. It's alright. Not really much to say. I mean, uh, I like Halo, the Halo game for co-op, and OSTD was the very first one that absolutely just... I don't, like, hate them to where I want to stab and kill someone, but it's not, like, something I'm waving on the streets about. Decent, though, uh, Guitar Hero Aerosmith, Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock, Guitar Hero 2 Music Games, yay. To be honest, I like 3 the most, and I know most people consider that one of the bad ones for Dale Smith, so, all opinion Uh, Gears of War. Who doesn't have Gears of War 1? Good game, good game. Um, played a hell of it when it first came out. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 4. Um, I pretty much hate every main character for every Grand Theft Auto game. Except for Nico Bellic. Nico Bellic was a likable character. He featured human traits and shit. You know, every other character's either life was body is when the mobs to guy out to kill you. They basically have uh, barely any personality. But Nico Bellic was one of the first really fleshed out characters in the Grand Theft Auto series. I really liked him as a character. Um, um, I know not everyone liked everything in GTA 4, but, uh, I have not played the add-ons. I do want to get, uh, the disc that has the two add-ons, uh, but I never got around to it yet. Uh, Fusion Frenzy 2. Um, a sequel to a party game on the original Xbox. Um, it's pretty crappy, to be honest. Um, if you're looking for a bunch of mini-games, uh, I've seen Fall Wars, but it's not anything really fancy, in my opinion. Uh, Final Fantasy XI, the Wings of Goddess expansion disc. Um, there is no disc for the, uh, three mini-expansions in the, uh, Abyssia expansions, as far as I'm aware of still, so, um, no collecting version of that, um... Fable 2. Oh dear. I'm going to make a lot of people mad. 
I don't like Fable 2. I liked it originally, but only as the game went on, I hated it more and more. I liked it, the Dog Companion. I liked it a lot of improvements. Um, though I consider Magic to be highly unbalanced, that can't really say I didn't like it. I like Magic, so, you know. And Guns was an interesting touch, too. But, um... Okay, wait a minute. I don't want to spoil the ending, but I hate the ending. The, especially the final, final boss. Um, you know, I thought the original Fable's final boss was just a joke. Um, but Fable 2... <laughs> oh, if you beat this game, you will know 100% what I'm talking about. And the end is just... Wow. Way to drop the bomb, Fable 2, and, um, I hear Fable 3 is not any better in that category either. Oh, will Fables ever have a decent ending? Find out in Fable 4. Uh, Tornal Sonata, a game I was really excited for. In the end, I ended up with a lot of mixed feelings about the title. Um, in case you don't know, what it is, is basically... You play in a dream... Okay, you know Frederick Chopin? Frederick Chopin? The famous pianist? Um, basically, he's on his deathbed. Um, if you know anything about real history with uh, Mr. Frederick, um, he died of a... Uh, it was a throat disease, I believe, wasn't it? Um... But he died in his bed, and, uh, and uh, basically he's in his deathbed, experiencing a strange dream world of music uh, themes and shit. So, um, you play as, um, well, you would get the idea you're playing as, um, oh dear. Oh, pardon me. <clears throat> You would get the idea that you uh, play as Frederick, but be honest, that's what kind of disappointed me. That's what I was looking forward to. Um, but Frederick starts taking a backseat to the characters in his head. And um, to be honest, the ending is kind of interesting. But the game, the game leaves me with some mixed feelings. And... Uh, I wouldn't say it was bad, but it's... It's not 100% normal either. It's wishy-washy. It's something I would recommend trying before you buy it. Because it's not 100%. But, but I like to think I did enjoy it. Just had a few mixed feelings of it. Now, uh... Oh, good lord. Hell gone. Ah, I got this. A dollar. One, one dollar. Is dreadful. Dreadful beyond imagination. It's a co op game, and I bought it for the very purpose of co op. And, um,. This game is awful. It's it's truly Oh good lord. It's, what? I didn't even realize this. The back of the cover says there's an exclusive boss and two additional levels. Oh my goodness, I tortured myself even more than I needed to. Oh Wow. I mean the movie was like considered really, really bad. But I mean, <sighs> good luck getting your friends to play this piece of junk with you. It's it deserves to be born to ashes, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Ugh. Oh, sorry.
Ugh. Apologies, apologies. It's really all this freaking dust. Ugh. Okay, we're almost done here. You can stop hearing me sniffling in this field. And chat arms, chat arms, um, mixed feelings. It's a strange hybrid of torn based and tactics. Um, you have a small tactics field, you move people around, and you take torns like in a torn based RPG, but, um, you sort of attacks. Your buffs and heals affect different squares, so your placement is very important of your killers. Um, and it also features like a Pokemon-like thing where you can capture additional uh, monster creatures to swap between your party members. Uh, and it's uh, by FromSoft, uh, the cradles of uh, Demon Souls and Dark Souls, by the way. Um, the story's kind of, uh, bizarre, but, um, it's okay. It's, uh, mine, uh, you probably won't get this if you buy used, but, uh, mine is in a sleeve, and it comes with a little graphic comic, um, which is a prequel to the whole story. Not really missing much there, but, uh, Something nice if you're a collector. Uh, so then, uh, uh, Earth Defense Force uh, 2017. Um, Earth Defense Force, uh, technically Earth Defense Force 3. Um, in Japan and such. Uh, this was like, I don't know if it's really the Force, but it's definitely. Um, Force 3D publisher, 3D sandlot game, well, 3D the publisher, um, game I played. Uh, sandlot makes them, but, uh, make the Earth Defense Force aside from the, uh, Insect Arm again, but 3D, uh, publishes them. And, uh, I don't know if 3D, if, had anything else out in America, or if this was a Force entry. But, um, very fun game. It's, uh, two player. Oh, split screen co-op, and I definitely recommend it for uh, just insane B movie gaming insanity. Really, um, it's just uh, well, it's, uh, oh dear. Uh, here's uh, one of Axis's uh, um, <laughs> death smiles. Um, what an odd, odd series. Um, um, Axis gave us Death Smiles 1, and, uh, it's, uh, it's a Hell Bullet game, um, if you play a lot of hard modes and stuff, it, it's pretty gluelizing without the if it continues, but, um, this is a really popular series in, uh, Japan, I think it's up to, like, Five, ten, I, I don't know. I know there's multiple. I think uh, America just got two as a digital download from Cave, um, like a few months ago. So, um, that's definitely interesting for Death Smile fans and import of uh, Hell Bullet games. Um, we got, uh, Dead Rising 2 and Dead Rising 1. As everyone should know, I really, really, really like the Dead Rising series. Um, I do want to get off the record, but I haven't really gotten around to it because it's really a remix Dead Rising 2, so it's kind of on the fence whether I really want to buy, buy that right now. I might, why not? It's kind of wishy washy. Um, Dead Alive Extreme 2. If I haven't said it enough already, this game sucks. If you're not in it to look at boobs, you're not getting a game. This is what it all is. Softcore porn is what this is. Why do I buy this stupid crap? And again, the story is easy to get through. 
I mean, <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say. It's like you think they could pull a more effort to a story mode. I mean, and to be honest, I think two is inferior to one because at least one actually felt like it had a game in it. Two. Some feels off about two. Ugh. Pardon me. Dead Alive Four, um, one of my only three sixty games too. Um, I like the fighting games. I like uh, the Dead Alive fighting games. They're very nice, uh, fun, enjoyable, and all that. Um, the Hill, I know I'm probably gonna get a lot of crap for saying this, but you know I don't care. You know it's personal taste. Uh, Darkness of Days. I actually like this first person shooter. You may begin the initial booing and hatred of me. Start. You can. Right now. Right now. Okay. Look. I like interesting concepts. Space Marines shooting aliens with regenerating health isn't exactly something new. Even when Halo did it. It just made the whole case scenario even worse, to be honest. But, you know, being a... Now, story-wise, it's not really new, but I don't know any other force person shooter that makes you, like... That has a plot like this. I mean, like, TV-wise, no. This isn't a unique plot. There are movies and shows and shit that have done crap like this. But as a game, I haven't seen this. Basically, you're a soldier in Custard's army, and you get, um, well, we all know what happened to Custard, if you, uh, happen to remember. Pardon me, guys. Ugh. I'm gonna need some more freaking, uh, tissue paper at this rate. Um, basically, you know, Custard gets killed, and his soldiers die and shit. And you're, you're stabbed in the leg with an arrow, and you're about to die and shit. And, these time travels just poof and grab you and retreat and basically um these people who are missing in action as time agents because they they were just missing in action so they save you and use you as an agent so you go in the past to fix incidents that keep changing and you find out this old organization which um Later, uh, you'll find uh, something interesting about that. But, um, is changing time for some reason. So you have to stop them and uh, keep time on its, um, on the white course. And it, it starts getting really obscure. Like, one moment I really thought was interesting is where you get screwed over. That these people gave, um, I believe one of the, okay, it was in, uh, I think it was in the World War. Oh, no, 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 it was in the Confederate War, uh, with the North versus the South, actually, um, where they gave, uh, one of the soldiers of the North Uzi guns, or some kind of machine gun, and he's, like, screaming, running around, going, I am the chosen one of God, and I am divine, and shit, and you basically get screwed over, because you lose contact with your people, they jam your equipment, so you can't get a reinforcement or futuristic weaponry, so you actually have to wield the old guns of this time period, like, okay, you try to realistically use the guns of the time period, but there's a few, like, oh my goodness, we're gonna get fucked moments, we're gonna have to pull a bazooka or something out here, fix this shit. And basically, the situation gets to where you can't do that. You've just been freaking completely screwed the back out, back up, so. Uh, that one is an interesting moment in the game. Uh, I would look it up. It's, uh, really cheap, I'm pretty sure. It's sold really bad, which is a real shame. Because I really think somebody would do this, that game a really big favor by picking it up and making a sequel with a lot of money behind it. 
Though you might want to get the PC version, since uh, with PC stuff you can probably boost up the graphics and processing of that. Obviously, um, this is a huge scale war happening on the map, so there's a lot of characters running around, so it's kinda... But because of that, I'm forgiving of it, you know? I, I can understand it, you know? It's kinda hard to process, like, hundreds of soldiers at one time, you know? But anyway, uh, Crackdown. Uh, superhero uh, GTA style didn't really uh, didn't really uh, interest me much. Uh, went through it being that uh, condemned criminal origins. Very very creepy ass game. Uh, be honest, I think it's far creepier than the, its sequel. Uh, definitely worth a look. Oh, Claire Bockle's Jericho. Oh dear. Um, what's really sad is this could have been a really interesting game. Um, you play as a squad of, um, what is it, six people, I believe? Yeah, there's like, uh, six people in the back. In the corner there. Um, story's pretty freaking weird, but to be honest, what I'm saying is this is a missed opportunity for uh, co-op or online shit that this will have made the game a lot more interesting but um, what y you play as a dead guy who um, can possess the different characters and swap between them um, an interesting idea too but to be honest I really think there was a missed opportunity in flopping around with multiplayer and stuff uh Chrome Hounds. This game is pretty worthless now, to be honest, because uh, the servers went down. And the um, this is from FromSoft again, by the way. It was published by Sega for America. Um, Chrome Hounds was a very interesting game because um, uh, the people who are making like real-time strategy games, real-time. Okay. Um, People who are trying to make real-time strategy MMO games um, are using a kind of concept that this game used for its online, where you have like a country and basically two sides, and you do fights with your mechs, except for those real-time MMOs, they were going to do uh, real-time strategy fights. But it involved a larger-scale war of two conflicting sides trying to take over all the territory in that. Um, and that's what was really interesting about this game, but the servers are down now, so um, it's a bit disappointing for that. Because um, it was a really interesting experience. Uh, Call of Duty for Modern Warfare. Um, definitely a very interesting uh, experience. Uh, it was an attempt to drop the whole World War Two and all that jazz and try something more modern, but they didn't want to base it on real modern events, they made up one, so. But uh, the nuclear explosion event that happens in it is very, I mean, it, you, you must have heard of it, to be honest, I mean, when, you know, it went all over there and it's like, oh my goodness, what a touching emotional scene that I have to admit, that's true. Uh, Call of Duty 3, uh, which I believe was one of the launch titles for, uh, 360? Um, it's okay. And the Call of Duty 2, uh, it's okay too. Now we're biggie, big, big, big. Bullet Witch, um, pretty iffy. And, uh, has the reverse cover which shows the, uh, all the costumes she can get, uh... Um... Bullet Witch is a third person... Uh... It's a third person game, and it's, um... Basically, you have a broom gun thing, and it's, um... You got magic, and... This YouTube, it, it, it's a little interesting, but be honest, it feels like there's something unpolished about. Oh, here's the worst ball king game. The worst one of the three. Big bumpin'. Piece of junk. Don't even bother getting that. That sucks. Sucks. Horrible. 
peace joke. Beautiful cat by Catamar is always fun. Um Katamai is always good. And you can wall up three sixties in this Katamai. So won't you play with my Katamai? It says it's great. Um uh, again we're going in there. I liked the concept of Assassin's Creed. Um, I did not end up really liking the game in the end, though. And it's mainly because I didn't like what you did in between your assassination missions. I mean, let's see. If I remember correctly, you basically had five different tasks you can do. Pickpocket, beat up information, kill someone for another assassin. Um... Uh, listening to information, like stalk someone, listening to information. I don't know. But basically, those, that uh, task was always available before every assassination. All you had to do was pick your favorite three, do those three every single time, get those three hints, then you automatically get the location, go kill the person, run away to your hideaway, and you're safe. Same concept over and over again. Each assassination person was a little different scenario, but in the end, uh, until you got to the end, it all felt a lot the same. Then the end actually is pretty freaking different and weird and shit, but Assassin's Creed 2 supposedly fixed a lot of my problems with the game. You know, criticism that people had like me. But aside from that, it, is, it was a good game. Uh, climbing and everything felt very really fun and shit. Um, so, uh, that, it, to me, it was a big shame that happened to it. Um, Army of Two. Not really that bad, to be honest. Um, I didn't think it was too bad. It's, it's a decent co-op. Um, the only flaw I ever saw with Army of Two was the... Um, I believe Yahtzee mentioned it in his review. Well, um, when you lift somebody up on a ledge, and then he has to pull you up, but he gets killed from, like, gunfire, so he's bleeding out while you can't reach him. It's like, no, game over. And here we go. Alan Wake. Alan Wake. But, uh, Alan Wake. I really liked the Alan Wake. Uh, regardless of people like Yahtzee, who, uh, basically bashed it a lot, um... Um, Alan Wake was an interesting take of survival elements with the third person. Um, it's very cinematic and, um, very emotional and... It's an experience I would say is worth experiencing. But the thing, um, similar to uh, Alone in the Dark 5, is um, the weird kind of TV style where it's like, last time, this time, next time, last time, it's like, shut up. Um, it was kind of crappy, they basically sold the ending as download content though, but... Um, if you buy it new, you get one of the digital downloads for uh, free. You get a code. Um, I do not know if new copies of it still come with that. So that you might want to look into before you buy it. Um, actually, you might actually even get both of them with new copies now. Um, that would be a smart move in my opinion. But... Uh, I really enjoyed uh, Alan Wake and the two add-ons for it. Um, very good. It's very psychological. Um, not the most deepest psychological, but it's definitely a uh, worthy thing to check out. And um, that should be every single 360 game. Hopefully, if not, then, well, at least it was most of them. Um, sorry for all the sneezing, I really apologize for that. Like I said, all the dust is really bothering me. Um, we're going to be moving on to PS3 in a bit. Um, going to get stuff moved around that, but I'm going to go work on that next.